بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله رب العالمين والصلاة والسلام على رسوله الكريم وعلى آله وصحبه أجمعين اللهم لا علم لنا إلا ما علمتنا إنك أنت العليم الحكيم اللهم علمنا ما ينفعنا وانفعنا بما علمتنا وزدنا علما اللهم إننا نعوذ بك من علم لا ينفع ومن قلب لا يخشع ومن نفس لا تشبع ومن دعوة لا يستجاب لها أما بعد السلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته Welcome everyone to another class, another day in studying the book of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala May Allah make this Qur'an a proof for us all on the day in which it matters the most Amin. Today we move on to verse number 20 In this 20th verse, Allah Azza wa Jalla He says قَالَتْ أَنَّا يَكُونُ لِي غُلَامٌ narrating the statement of Maryam alayhi salam in which she said and she wondered how can I have a son when no man has ever touched me and no man has ever touched me and no man has ever touched me no person has ever touched me nor am I unchaste now the statement of Maryam alayhi salam she said here, قالت أن يكون لي غلام. How can I have a son? She was amazed. Now, how is this possible? Because ولم يمسسني بشر. Because no man, no person, has touched me. ولم أكو بغية. Nor was I someone who was unchaste. Now, we find that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, he says in the Quran, وَمَرْيَمَ بْنَةَ إِمْرَانَ الَّتِي أَحْصَنَتْ فَرْجَهَا فَنَفَخْنَا فِيهِ مِنْ رُوحِنَا Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says that Maryam, the daughter of Imran, was someone who preserved her private parts. And it was Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala who blew in her the ruh. وَالَّتِي أَحْصَنَتْ فَرْجَهَا فَنَفَقْنَا فِيهَا مِنْ رُوحِنَا وَجَعَلْنَاهَا وَبْنَاهَا آيَةً لِلْعَالَمِينَ Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says about her once again that she was someone who was chaste who protected her private parts and we blew in her our ruh and we made both her as well as her son as a sign for the creation Allah as a sign for the creation Naam Notice that Maryam, she said, Lam yam sasni basharun. No one has ever touched me. If she, if she had stopped there, then we understand the intent. But she included the statement, Walam akubariya, that she was not unchaste. She was not unchaste, nor am I unchaste. What is the reason for this? She wondered, how can I have a son when no man has ever touched me, nor am I unchaste? She said here, وَلَمْ يَمْسَسْنِي بَشَرٌ وَلَمْ أَكُوْ If she had just said, وَلَمْ يَمْسَسْنِي بَشَرٌ We will understand her intent, that she, no one has ever touched her. But she included the word or the statement, وَلَمْ أَكُوْ Of course, we mentioned أَكُوْ, the asl is أَكُنْ But because of lam and يَكُنْ being in the mudari' form, the noon is dropped, لِتَخْفِيف Why is the additional statement mentioned? What do you guys think? Some of the scholars they mention that yem sesni lem yem sesni. This part of the statement is in reference to her being married, meaning I was not married and I did not have a husband. Who had relations with me? Walam aku bariya is in reference to outside of wedlock. Yani, so neither was she married, and nor did she have relations outside of wedlock. Right? Other scholars they mention that this additional statement walam aku bariya is for emphasis. It is to emphasize yani, the tremendous status of Maryam. Is that she was the epitome of being someone who was chaste. Subhanallah. Just as you find Allah Azza he says in the Quran, Hafidu ala salawati 
وَالصَّلَاةِ الْوُسْطَى To preserve the salawat. But then he says, وَالصَّلَاةِ الْوُسْطَى And the middle prayer. Why is the middle prayer repeated? Why is it mentioned? To highlight its status. Likewise, you find that Allah Azza he mentions in Surah Al-Baqarah, وَمَلَائِكَتِهِ وَرُسُونِهِ وَجِبْرِيلَ وَمِيكَالِ and the angels and his messengers. And Jibreel and Mikal. Jibreel and Mikal, they're both from the Malaika. Naam? But Allah already mentioned Malaika before. And he singled out Jibreel and Mikail for what purpose? To highlight their status. Okay? To highlight their status. Atful khas al am In this particular instance. طيب. In Maryam, the same concept is being done. Yani the same intent is that Allah is just highlighting her status. How chaste a woman she was. Now, Notice she said, وَلَمْ أَكُوْ بَغِيًّا بَغِيًّا بَغِي بَغِيٌّ If you know a little bit of Arabic, you know that this word, بَغِيٌّ For example, you have um, مُسْلِمٌ and مُسْلِمَةٌ What's the difference between both? Muslimun is reference to a male. Muslim. Man. Sah? Muslimatun is in reference to female. Tayyib. Why did she not say baghiyatan? Why is there no ta here? The ta ta'nif. Scholars, he mentioned because baghi, this word in particular is used ghalibun fin nisa. It's used for women. This particular word in Arabic language, this structure. Like, of course, is a word for unchaste for men, but this structure with these letters is used for women. And in the Arabic language, whenever there is something specific only to women, then there's no need to add a ta, a ta'nif. There's no need to add that close ta, ta mabuta. For example, only women are pregnant. صح? So do we say in the Arabic language, here hamilatun? La. Why? We say Hiya Hamilun. She's pregnant. Hamilun. Why? Because that attribute is only for women. Only women can get pregnant. So there's no need to add the ta tatnif. The ta tatnif is there to differentiate and tell you that it's for women. طيب? If it's an attribute or something specific only to women, then there's no need to add that ta. Likewise, ha'ild. Ha'ild. Do we say ha'ildatun? La, we say ha'ild. Because only women can have their menses. Aqir. Only women beca- can become barren. So here she's emphasizing that she was extremely chaste. And that was affirmed by Allah Azza in the Quran, as we just mentioned at the end of Surah Tahrim, for example. Allah mentions that she preserved her private parts. Then we find that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, He says, Naam. He says, Qala kathaliki, qala rabbuki. He replied, so will it be? Who is it a reference to here? He replied. Remember, this is a conversation between who? Jibreel alayhi salam and Maryam. So Jibreel alayhi salam, he says, so it will be. Your Lord says, it is easy for me. And so will we make him a sign. Make him a sign. Make, yani who? Isa alayhi salam. And a mercy from us. And it is a matter already decreed. Allah Akbar. Now, and this shows the qudra of Allah once again. The might and power of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. In the last story of Zakaria. We saw that Allah Azza wa Jalla granted him and his wife a child despite being older in age. And now in this story, we see something even greater. SubhanAllah, something even greater. And the way Allah Azza wa Jalla relates these stories, we see that there's a, a divine method of teaching. Is that you begin with that which is easy. If you're going to teach something, you begin with the easiest. And then you work your way up. Something easy for me, subhanAllah. 
ayatan lin nasi as a sign for the people. Because as you will see, Isa alayhi salam, he spoke from the cradle. And this is what we're going to study tomorrow in tomorrow's portion. Naam. So we'll talk about that tomorrow. But let's talk about now rahmatan minna. That it is a mercy from us. How is it a mercy from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala? It was a mercy to Maryam, of course. It's a mercy to Isa alayhi salam. And it's also a mercy to the people. He said here, Rahmatan. Here we have a nakira. Now, a nakira to feed umum. Meaning it's general. And it's not a mercy from one aspect, lala, only. Rather, it's from multiple aspects. This was a mercy to Isa from the aspect of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala granting him a nubuwa, making him a prophet, giving him the message. And making him from the Ulul Azam, the five major prophets. It's a mercy. Of course, he will have a lofty station in paradise. SubhanAllah. It's a mercy to Maryam, alayhi salam, because he honored Maryam to have a child who was a prophet and a messenger and from the Ulul Azam. And he raised her status. SubhanAllah. Look at the virtue of preserving your chastity. When you preserve your private parts, when you avoid zina, how Allah Azza wa Jalla can raise you. And this is something that we wrote in the daily deeds. I left it obscure for those students to ponder. Yani, if you avoid committing zina and you preserve your private parts, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala al-mannan al-wahhab will bestow his bounties upon you. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala bestow his bounties on us all. Amen. No. This is how it's a mercy to Maryam alayhi salam. As for a rahma for mankind, for the people, from many aspects. One, because he was a prophet, because he was a messenger, he taught the people the book. So they learned how to worship Allah correctly and thus earn Allah's pleasure. No. And he purified them, taught them what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has commanded them and what he has prohibited them against. Now, so he was a mercy to his nation. And he's also a mercy to our nation as well. How is that? What is the greatest fitting, the greatest fitna, the greatest trial that mankind will face? A Dajjal. And a Dajjal comes at the end of whose ummah? At the end of the Ummah Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. Sah? So who will kill this major fitna, this greatest fitna on earth? Bihawlillah, Isa bin Maryam. Alayhim salam. Naam. So from this aspect, he's a mercy for mankind, not only for the previous nation, his own nation, but for our nation as well. And of course, the greatest mercy to mankind طيب, that Allah Subh'anaHu Wa Taala selected was Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. Make sure your videos are off. Then, نعم, and this was something already decreed. And this shows that Allah, His knowledge, when we talk about His Qadr, okay, when we speak about His Qadr, we understand that His knowledge, so He's aware of every single thing, even before it occurs. Naam. This is from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala's perfection then he says subhanahu wa ta'ala hamalathu fantabadhat bihi makanan qasiyya so she conceived him and withdrew with him to a remote place qasiyya meaning ba'idan somewhere very far hamalathu fantabadhat bihi why did she withdrew to a remote place because as her stomach was growing she was afraid that the people will accuse her of a disgraceful deed because she was unmarried. Okay. So the people out of their ignorance, they will automatically start blaming her and start destroying her honor. So her subhanAllah having wisdom, having hikmah, she decided to go away and give birth in that remote place. Um, it's mentioned that she was pregnant 
either nine months like a regular woman or eight months or immediately, immediately, once the angel Jibril came and informed her, she was pregnant and she gave birth right away. The most correct opinion, wallahu alam, is that her pregnancy was normal. Yani, it was not nine months because there's no indication to show that Isa was born earlier than that. Khairan. So the asl remains, the foundation remains makan ala makan. It remains as it is. Naam. So she was afraid that her people would accuse her of this disgraceful deed. So she went away trying to protect her honor. And we see from here that we as Muslims, we as Muslims, we have to understand that we should avoid engaging in actions that would certainly destroy our honor or could lead towards tarnishing our honor. Yani avoid those affairs that may lead to the destruction of our honor. And the Prophet ﷺ, he said in an authentic hadith, إِنَّ الْحَلَالَ بَيِّنٌ وَإِنَّ الْحَرَامَ بَيِّنٌ That certainly the lawful matters are clear and the unlawful matters are clear. وَبَيْنَهُمَا أُمُورٌ مُشْتَبِهَاتٌ And between those two clear matters are doubtful matters. لَا يَعْلَمُهُنَّ كَثِيرٌ مِنَ النَّاسِ it which many of the people are unaware of. They do not know. So whoever avoids these doubtful affairs, these dubious matters, He said, then he has certainly um, protected himself. He has cleared himself in regard to his religion with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. They will not be held accountable in front of Allah for committing a sin due to following into the dubious matters. And also he would protect his honor. His honor. Showing that we as Muslims, we have a duty to preserve our honor. And whoever falls into those doubtful matters, they will certainly fall into haram. So, we have to make sure that we preserve our honor. And among the greatest ways of preserving our honor is to do what is known, what is clearly halal and what is clearly haram. And anything you're uncertain of, avoid it. Avoid it until clarity comes. Be patient. Okay, don't be hasty. Why? Because al-ajalatu min shaytan Being hasty, this is from shaytan. This is from shaytan. Nam. Doing actions and not knowing the the full ruling. It's always best to wait, to wait to know the clear ruling of an action, to protect yourself in front of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala first and foremost, and then to protect yourself in front of the people. And, um, to have ana, ana. There was a man in which the Prophet وسلم, he told him that certainly you possess two attributes which Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala he loves. The first one is al ana, and the second being al hin. I and mean, being forbearant, being patient. Al-Ana, scholars, they say that it references someone who waits, is not hasty. Someone who does their own research and yeah, he does tathabbut, verify matters. Verify matters before they indulge into it. Naam. This is something that Allah Azza Jalla loves. Right? What did it tell in Surah Hujurat? If there comes to you a fasiq with a naba, with a, a piece of news, then verify it. Verify it before you convey to the people and you cause corruption and you cause misguidance because of false information. So it's important, ya ikhwan al-khawat, to be patient. Don't rush to do actions. Okay, rather take your time and know the ruling, then you do it. Aynam. This is what preserves your honor among the people. And there's nothing wrong with you wanting to preserve your honor among the people. Look at Maryam. She, why did she leave? She knows she didn't do anything wrong. But she went to a remote place, a faraway place, to preserve her honor because she didn't want to be blamed by the people. Nam. So in Islam, there's nothing wrong with wanting to protect your honor and to prevent it from being diminished or attacked by others. Nam. And there's also nothing wrong with wanting to obtain the love of the people. Yani wanting people to love you. In fact, there's a hadith of the Prophet Muhammad that a man came to him 
And he said, Dullani ala amalin. Idha amiltuhu ahabbani Allahu wa ahabbani nas. Guide me to an action that if I were to do it, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will love me and the people will love me. What was the Prophet ﷺ response? Was his response, don't seek the love of the people? La. Rather, he guided him. He told him, Izhad fi dunya yuhibbaka Allah. Wazhad fi ma inda nasi yuhibbaka nas. To be aesthetic in the dunya and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will love you. And be aesthetic as it relates to the people's possessions, what they own, right? Stay away from those, those things and the people will love you and the people will love you. Enam. He didn't say forget about obtaining the people's love, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, which shows the permissibility of desiring to obtain the people's love. But for what reason? Why do you want to obtain the people's love? That's the question. There's nothing wrong with obtaining the people's love and wanting to obtain their love. But the mushkila, the issue is why? Why do you want the people to love you? Do you want them to love you because you want them to mention you? Because you want to be known as someone knowledgeable among them? Because you want them to praise you? Huh? If these are the reasons, then of course that's haram, right? That's prohibited. Because now you're, if you're doing actions in order to please them so they can love you, and that's your sole intention, then that's haram, of course. That's shirk. Riya. Naam? The intent of obtaining the people's love, it should be solely for the pleasure of Allah. How is that? Yani if the people love you, then they will naturally what? Listen to you. So when you teach them about the deen, when you have something to say about Allah Azza wa Jalla and about the sunnah of Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, they will naturally listen and obey and carry out that act of worship upon the sunnah. You understand? It's all about what? Calling to Allah and not calling to yourself. Hey, Nam. Nam. This is one of the golden advices. Shaykhuna Salih al Fawzan, Hafizullah Ta'ala. Shaykh Salih al Fawzan is one of the major scholars currently living. May Allah preserve him. And, you know, every Hajj, he would come to Mecca and he would have a sitting, a gathering. Okay, we'll come to Masjid bin Baz here in Aziziyah and he'll have a gathering. And the Masjid will be packed. The whole Masjid is packed. You couldn't even walk anywhere. Every year is like that, right? And one of the years, a couple years ago, he mentioned some valuable advice that I still remember today. SubhanAllah, it was so deep. He quoted the verse, uh, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala statement, Ud'u ila sabili rabbika bil hikmati wal mu'idhati al hasana wa jadilhum billati hiya ahsan inna rabbaka huwa a'lamu biman dalla an sabilihi wa huwa a'lamu bil muhtadin in Surah Al-Nahl, where Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, he tells us, Ud'u ila sabili rabbika, to invite everyone to the way of your Lord, with wisdom and kind advice, and only debate with them, وَجَادِلْهُمْ بِالَّتِي هِيَ أَحْسَنْ In the best manner. إِلَىٰ آخِرِ الْآيَةِ طيب, he said, he highlighted a point, it's so simple, but before this, I never really thought of it like that. SubhanAllah, this is how the ulama are. They point out, you know, things that are supposed to be obvious but are not obvious. Usually when you hear this ayah being recited, you find that, you know, people, they quote it for the purpose of hikmah, calling with hikmah, using hikmah, using good speech, good admonitions, debate in the best manner. But the point that Sheikh highlighted was, Udu'u ila sabili rabbika, is that you're calling not to yourself, Ayyuhad Talib, Ayyuhad Da'i, but rather you're calling to your Lord. And the way he put it, subhanAllah, it was so Allah Akbar. It still resonates to me today. Like, subhanAllah, it's been like a couple of years now. Allah Akbar, may Allah preserve the Shaykh. Now, I mean, this is how we should be. It's not about your brand, keys to knowledge. It's not about your hashtags, K2K. It's not about your name, Abdus Salam. It's not about all that. Your slogans. Your, your t-shirts, your pens, your cups. No, 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 no. Your website, la, 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 la. We have to keep in mind why we are learning knowledge, why we're propagating knowledge. It's not for intisar nafs. It's not for our own selves and to you know, promote our own brands. La. The ultimate goal and the only goal is to spread la ilaha illallah Muhammad Rasulullah. To teach Islam. 
to teach Islam. This is our deen. You understand? We call to call Allah wa call Rasul. The fahm is salaf is salih. Naam? This is our understanding. And it's never to call to your own self. May Allah protect us all. May Allah protect us all. Naam? Hey, naam. The point is, is that we call to Allah and there's nothing wrong with wanting to obtain the people's love so that they can accept the message. Hey, naam. And there's nothing wrong with wanting to obtain the people's love and wanting to protect your honor. This is why Maryam alayhi salam, she went to a makan and qasiyya. She went to a remote place to protect her honor from being tarnished and slandered. Maryam, she was afraid that she would be accused of this disgraceful deed. So she secluded herself. So what happened? So then the al-makhad is in reference to the waj'u al-wilada, the pains of labor, okay? The pains a female faces when she is about to give birth. So the pains of labor drove her to the trunk of a palm tree, meaning Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala guided her there. نعم. قالت يا ليتني مت قبل هذا وكنت نسيا منسيا. She cried, Alas, I wish I had died before this and it was a thing long forgotten. And it was a thing long forgotten. نعم. الله أكبر. We take a look at this verse. We notice that the palm tree is mentioned. That Allah guided her to what? A palm tree. Of course, Allah could have guided her to any other area. Like, for example, the wall of her home or a wall of a building or another tree. But Allah guided her where? To the palm tree. For another sign to occur. And we'll mention the sign later on at the end of the class. Let's focus right now on her statement in this verse. Ya laytani mittu qabla hadha wa kuntu nasyan mansiya. I wish I had died before this. And I was a thing long forgotten. This is a statement of Maryam alayhi salam, right? But wasn't she told by Jibreel alayhi salam that Allah is giving you this baby as a sign for the people and a mercy from Allah Azza wa Jalla. So if she knows that, why is she saying this? I wish I had died before this. If she knows that this is a sign and it's a rahmah, why is she making this statement? She's making this statement because she's still a human, right? And the pain was unbearable. She's still a human. SubhanAllah. She felt the pain of labor. And she never, this is the first time, never ever has she ever experienced anything like this. Right? And Allah Akbar. A side point is that if she felt this pain, alayhi salam, and she couldn't protect herself against this pain, yani should she be worshipped? Is she deserving of worship? La abadan. Right? Unlike what some people do. They worship Maryam. Thinking that she is a, uh, you know, a righteous being, a righteous being who deserves to be worshipped, and that la, this is incorrect. She is incapable to defend her own self against harm, so she's un- she is not worthy of worship. Nam, and the only one worthy of worship is the one who causes the harm and can take it away. Who is Allah Subhanahu wa Taala alone? Nam. So the pain was unbearable. Yet, despite it being unbearable. It's still a blessing in mercy. She was granted Isa alayhi salam, a prophet, a rasul. And we could derive from this point of the story that the greater the blessing, know for sure that the trials will become more severe. Is that there's nothing valuable in life, ikhwan akhwat, except that it comes with hardship. Enam. There's nothing valuable in life except that you have to go through some hardship to obtain it. Hey, you want to memorize the Quran 
You want to memorize Surah Maryam? Do you think it's going to be easy? Do you think that shaitan is going to sit there and just let you do it without any distractions, without any trouble? Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will test you. He will test you. And he will test you to show you, because Allah knows everything, but he's testing you to show you how sincere you are. How willing you are to obtain your goals. Ainam. So for that reason, Allah Azza will put numerous barriers in front of you. But these barriers, you can remove it easily. Because Allah, Allah does not give anyone more than they can bear. Ainam. So you can hurdle these barriers, but you have, you have to have the intention and you have to have a drive, okay? You'll find that when you memorize Quran, you repeat it so many times, but you, can't, you cannot commit it to memory, right? That's difficult. It's a barrier. It's, it's demotivating sometimes, no? You'll find that events will occur in your life and it will take away from your schedule. It will take away from your time with memorization. That's a barrier, no? It's something that decreases your desire to continue in memorizing perhaps someone will die in your life someone beloved to you will die someone will get married and you have to attend those you know weddings those funerals it takes away from your time to memorize perhaps you may be afflicted with illness you may become sick you may have uh, or go through financial or emotional hardship distress a nam you want to memorize the quran you're going to experience these things Okay, there will be a plethora of barriers placed in front of you. This is the idea I want you guys to get understand that there will be a plethora of barriers placed in front of you. But what will you do, Ikhwan al Khawat? When you face these hardships, what will you do? Will you give up the moment the hardship strikes? Will you give up and that's it? Will you let these barriers prevent you from attaining your goals, from memorizing the Quran, from memorizing Surah Maryam? Will you let these barriers prevent you from ascending levels in paradise because of something that yani, will disappear in a few moments? Or will you listen to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala's commandment? Ya ayyuha al-lazina amanu sta'inu bil-sabri wa salah Inna allaha ma'as-sabirin O you who possess iman Seek assistance with patience and prayer. Certainly, Allah Azza wa Jalla is with those who are patient. Ainam. Allah is with those who are patient. Meaning what? Allah assists those who are patient. Allah helps those who are patient. Allahu Akbar. No matter what you're going through, be patient. Isbiru. Isbiru. Wasabiru. Be patient, ya ikhwan wa akhwat. May Allah Azza wa Jalla afrigh alayna as-sabr. May Allah bestow upon us all sabr so that we can accomplish our desires and our dreams and our goals. Ameen. Ainam. Fanadaha min tahtiha Allah tahzani wa qada ja'ala rabbuki tahtaki sariya. He says here, so a voice reassured her from below. Do not grieve. Your Lord has provided a stream at your feet. So a voice re reassured her. Some scholars say this voice was the voice of Jibreel alayhi salam. While others say it refers to Isa alayhi salam. Tayyib, what do you guys think? Is it Isa or Jibreel? Some say Isa, some say Jibreel, mashallah. Good. The correct view, Wallahu Alam, or the view that seems to be most correct and Allah knows best, is that this voice is referring to Isa. This voice, subhanAllah, as he's being delivered, he's telling his mother, Fanadaha min tahdiha alla tahzani, to not become sad. He reassured her and told her to not become sad. Your Lord has provided a stream at your feet. Why is this? Yani, what or what's the purpose or what is the benefit of it being Isa? Yani, Maryam is experiencing that this baby is speaking. Okay, and Allah Azza wa Jalla is preparing her 
for a future event. An event that's going to happen in a few moments. Enam. Yani, she's being exposed to the fact that her baby can talk. This is something amazing. Right? Like you can't fathom that, right? If you've experienced that for the first time, you don't know how to act. But if it happens for the second time or the third time, it starts to become normal. Now, so what happens later on in the story of Maryam, and we'll study this tomorrow, inshallah ta'ala, the verses. Um, when she returned back to her land, her people, فَأَتَتْبِهِ She came back with Isa to her people. قَوْمَهَا تَحْمِلُهُ That she came back with Isa to her people, تَحْمِلُهُ While she was carrying him. When they saw the baby, they said, قَالُوا يَا مَرْيَمُ لَقَدَ جِئْتِ شَيْئًا فَرِيَّا Oh, Maryam, you have certainly done a horrible thing. They said that in shock. They said, يَا أُخْتَ هَارُونَ مَا كَانَ أَبُوكِ إِمْرَأَ سَوْئٍ وَمَا كَانَتْ أُمُّكِ بَغِيَّا Right, talking about the father, he was not a decent man, nor was your mother unchaste. So what did Maryam do? فَأَشَارَتْ إِلَيْهِ so she pointed to the baby. What did the people say? How can we talk to someone who was an infant in the cradle? How did she know to point to the baby? Because she experienced when she was in labor that this baby talked. If she had explained herself at this moment, the people will never, ever, ever accepted it from her. Because how can you explain this baby? It's impossible. And she pointed to the baby. How did she know to point to the baby? Because she knew the baby could speak because of the moments when she was giving birth. Enam. So she pointed to Isa. And of course, we know um, Isa, he talked from the cradle. Inni Abdullahi atani al kitaba wa ja'alani. Nabiya, that certainly Allah has given me the book and made me a prophet. Ila akhiri, wa ja'alani mubarakan, and he made me blessed. Aina ma kuntu. Subhanallah, ajib, ajib, ajib. A baby saying all this. Shayuna, ajib, ajib. Allah akbar. La hawla wa la quwata illa billah. Amazing. Naam. So the voice, it was Isa alayhi salam. And this is from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala's, all right, going back to the birth. This is from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala's perfect and complete mercy. Is that Maryam alayhi salam, she was in a state of weakness, right? She was distressed. She was all by herself, okay? But Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala's help came. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala sent reassur reassurance. Now imagine, how do you feel when the baby tells you something like this? You feel a little bit better. I mean, you might be feel freaked out a little bit, but you feel a little better. Because you know this is from Allah. Now, and we should understand this. We should understand from this part of the story is that no matter what type of hardship that you go through, no matter what you're going through right now, okay, how difficult it gets, know that Ar Rahman is there to help you. Know that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is there to help you. First of all, know that it is Allah who allowed this to happen in the first place. And He did it for a reason to test you. So just as he has put you in this circumstance, he is the one who will take you out. But when it will it happen? Mata Nasrullah. When will Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala's success, his assistance come? Just around the corner. Allah in the Nasrullahi Tarib. It is close. It is close. You just have to be patient. For inna ma'al usri yusra. Inna ma'al usri yusra. With every hardship, there's two eases. Allah Akbar. Allah is just testing us for a few moments. For a few moments, it's going to pass. It's going to pass. Hey, Nam. And these moments, you shouldn't hate it, to be quite honest. You shouldn't hate it. Why? Because Allah put you in the situation for you to become a better person, for you to grow as an individual, for you to develop character. And be a man and be a woman to know how to deal with situations. Okay, these events are occurring to you to teach you. Ainam. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is exposing you to this right now so that you can handle something maybe even bigger in the future. You understand? This is something we need to understand. 
and how we should address these masaib, these uh, calamities that face us. Allahu Hakim, Allah is the most wise, ikhwana akhawat. He is the most wise, and He knows what's better for us than our own selves. Ainam. So keep this in mind whenever you are afflicted with a trial. Ainam. May Allah assist us all and allow us to remember Him in the good and bad times. I mean, Then we end with the statement of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala وَهُزِّي إِلَيْكِ بِجِذْعِ النَّخْلَةِ تُسَاقِطْ عَلَيْكِ رُطَابًا جَنِيًّا That he commanded her to shake the trunk of this palm tree towards you. It will drop fresh, ripe dates upon you. رُطَابًا جَنِيًّا Allahu Akbar يعني This whole story, it's amazing. And it's a sign for those who ponder. And even in this ayah, many times people skip over this ayah. They read it. They don't really reflect over it. They think the, the miracle is just in what's mentioned before and after. Yeah, in terms of her giving birth to a child while not having a husband and the baby Isa talking alayhi salam. But this verse, subhanAllah, is ayatun azimah as well. For those who ponder. And a date palm tree, if you've seen it, is this something yani, weak or feeble? It's strong. It has strong roots. If you were to try to shake a, a date palm tree, would you be able to? Extremely difficult. So what do you think about a woman who's going through labor? Would a normal woman who's going through labor be able to do that? La, la, la. It's very strong. Difficult, extremely difficult. Okay, yet Allah gave her the power to do so in this state. And look, he mentions here to saqit alayki rutaban janiya. If you guys ever seen dates like ripe dates, just simply touching it, it starts to mush up, right? And it starts to get bad, right? But here, subhanAllah, this is a sign from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Allah is showing her all of this, and she knows it's a sign. She recognizes all of this is a sign, right? She's going through it, Nam, and she recognizes that all of this is like you know unreal, Subhanallah. So, the dates are coming down ripe to her, without being destroyed. All of these are signs, yani, that Allah is giving Maryam alayhi salam and building her iman and building her up so she can have the strength and power and patience and fortitude to deal with the harms of the people when she returns back to her, her land. Yani once you experience something like this from your Lord, it builds your iman. It builds you as a person. And it, and, and it gives you a shield against the harms of the people. Enam. So yani we, we benefit from this part of the story is that if you want to, because there's always going to be shaitan and his armies trying to attack you you may be the best of people look at prophet muhammad sallallahu there's no one better than him yet even he had enemies so what about us of course we're going to have enemies now if you want to protect yourself against your enemy if you want to protect your your mindset your emotional mindset and your spiritual mindset and not be affected by their criticisms and by their statements and you know exaggerations and everything they say then worship your Lord. Focus on the worship of your Lord and Allah will give you that peace of mind. Allah will give you that serenity. People will say stuff about you and you won't even care. You won't even care. In fact, I will end with this. If you're going to call to Allah or practice the deen, know for sure you're going to have enemies. This is from the Sunan of the Anbiya of the past. Every righteous person mentioned the Quran, they had enemies. So if you embark on this path of being a Muslim, you're going to have enemies. That's the first thing you need to know. But when they start attacking you and start flinging insults and a lie on you, now, Sheikh Saleh al-Usaymi, he said, be like a nakhla, be like a date palm tree. How is that? Yani the date palm tree, if you hit it, what happens? Does it hit back? Does it attack you? It's not affected. Also, what happens? It gives you 
fresh dates. Allahu Akbar. Yani when the people attack you, don't attack them back, but rather benefit them. Give them benefits. Continue to benefit them. Take the higher route. Subhanallah. Yani even when the people attack you, you take the higher route and you call them to Allah no matter what. Just like Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa Just like the prophets of old. When the people harmed them and tried to kill them uh, and, and attack them, they still continue to call them to Allah. They did not exude any type of bad behavior. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala grant us good character. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala grant us patience. May Allah azza wa jalla grant us the strength to bear the harms of the people. May Allah azza wa jalla strengthen our iman. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala grant us the best of this life in the next. May Allah azza wa jalla make the Quran approve for us all and not against us. اللهم أصلح لنا ديننا الذي هو عصمة أمرنا وأصلح لنا دنيانا التي فيها معاشنا وأصلح لنا آخرتنا التي فيها معادنا وجعل الحياة زيادة لنا في كل خير وجعل الموت راحة لنا من كل شر اللهم آت نفوسنا تقواها وزكها أنت خير من زكاها أنت وليها ومولاها هذا وصلى الله وسلم على نبينا محمد وعلى آله وصحبه أجمعين سبحانك اللهم وبحمدك أشهد أن لا إله إلا أنت أستغفرك وأتوب إليك